Okay, so where are we going? Actually, that's just one of the questions that's raised in this uh, famous painting by Paul Gauguin, where uh, these people are asking themselves some very basic questions about uh, us and our place in the universe. So the complete set of questions is, what are we, where do we come from, and where are we going? Uh, and those are the questions that I want to discuss, uh, albeit somewhat briefly, in this talk. So uh, I'm going to be discussing it from the point of view of a physicist. And uh, as a physicist, you know, I look at the universe around us, and uh, what does it look like? Well, uh, we know it's expanding. And uh, it's been expanding for something like 13.8 billion years. And uh, right now, it's about the visible part is about 10 to the 28 centimeters across. OK, so if we now rephrase Gauguin's questions, what is the visible stuff in the universe made of? What happened back in the beginning of the universe? That's where we come from. And you know, what's the long-term future of the universe? Will it continue to expand? Will that expansion rate accelerate, as it seems to be doing at the moment? OK, so I should specialize a little bit. I'm a particle physicist, so I'm going to be talking the language of particle physics, I'm afraid. So if I want to rephrase Gauguin's questions, what are we? That becomes a question, what is matter made of? And I'm going to be spending a time, fair bit of time discussing one particular aspect of that question, which is why do things weigh? Why do the fundamental constituents of, part of, of matter have mass? Uh, where do we come from? What is the origin of matter? Can we explain the origin of the matter in the universe in terms of the properties of the fundamental particles constituents of matter? Astronomers tell us that in addition to the visible matter in the universe that you and I are made of, there's also a whole bunch of invisible dark matter. Is that some sort of particle that maybe we can detect in our experiments? How does the universe evolve? Well, Einstein gave us the equations for that, but you have to put into those equations the appropriate equations to describe the behavior of matter. Why is the universe so big and old? Uh, maybe that is also something that we can explain in the language of particle physics. What is the future of the universe? OK, so that is what I get paid to do, and that's what we particle physicists do for a living, to try to address these questions and provide at least some answers. And the answer to this question up here, why do things weigh, has been provided by Peter Higgs, whom you see here, smiling somewhat. And uh, we'll come back to him in a moment. The other questions there are going to require additional physics beyond that that's already been established. And I will discuss some of the possibilities for uh, answering those questions later on in the talk. OK, so this is a, a ruler with a, with a logarithmic scale. Uh, is there anybody else here old enough to remember slide rules? <laughs> oh, a whole lot of you. You look so much younger. OK. So on this slide rule, we've got uh, the size of the Earth in the middle. We've got the size of the universe, 10 to the 28 centimeters over there. And we've got the smallest scale that we speculate about at the beginning of the Big Bang, 10 to the minus 32 centimeters over on the left-hand side. And the human scale is, roughly speaking, half along, halfway along. Here it's represented by Albert Einstein and his kid sister, about a meter tall. So, of course, we know a fair amount about uh, what made up Einstein and his kid sister. Uh, we know they were made of molecules. Those molecules contain atoms. Those atoms were made of nuclei with clouds of electrons around. The nuclei contain things called protons and neutrons. And the fundamental constituents of protons and neutrons are objects that we call quarks. So a particle physicist will tell you the fundamental constituents of the visible matter in the universe are electrons and quarks and related particles. Now, an astronomer uh, looking up at the stars will say, yeah, that's all well and fine. Uh, those make up the visible stars in the universe. But they're held together in galaxies by this additional invisible dark stuff that I mentioned a moment ago. And of course, we particle physicists wonder whether that dark matter might not be some type of elementary particle. And what we do is we do experiments, for example, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, 
where we try to create new types of particle and study you know, the properties that occurred very early in the history of the universe when it was a fraction of a second old. So, as I said, I am a particle physicist, uh, but there's always been a close connection between particle physics, astrophysics, and cosmology. So, the physics of the very small and the physics of the very large. And that's exemplified by the fact that many of the fundamental discoveries in particle physics in the first half of the last century were made using cosmic rays. These are energetic particles that come from explosions in outer space. Those produce energetic particles. They hit the atmosphere. When they hit the atmosphere, they produce lots of other particles. And many new types of particle were discovered that way in the first half of the last century. For example, antimatter, which I'll be returning to later on, antimatter was first discovered in the cosmic rays. But around the middle of the last century, physicists realized that if they wanted to study those particles in detail and measure their properties accurately, they needed to do controlled experiments in the laboratory. And so they decided to make their own cosmic ray collisions using particle accelerators and colliders. So, so what did those experiments reveal as being the structure of matter? So they revealed something that we call the standard model of particle physics. So this standard model was proposed by Abdus Salam, originally from Pakistan, and you see here, and uh, two American theorists, uh, Glashow and Weinberg. And uh, their theory, which they proposed in the late 1960s, was based on ideas proposed by Peter Higgs and others, also in the early 1960s. And it was tested by experiments at CERN, uh, some of those experiments extremely high precision. Uh, for example, here, if you look very carefully, you can see a little red dot. That's an experimental measurement. The green line is a theoretical calculation. Uh, they agree perfectly well. In fact, that's even a cheat, because that little red dot has been blown up by a factor of 10 so that you can see it. That tells you how well is the agreement between the uh, theory and the experiment. OK, so what does the standard model contain? So I, I talked earlier on about the quarks that make up nuclear matter. I talked about the electron. Uh, there's a couple of similar particles. The muon that was discovered in cosmic rays, and another one called the tau. There's neutrinos, which I'm not going to have very much time to talk about. Those are the fundamental constituents of matter. And then between those constituents, we distinguish four fundamental interactions. So we've got uh, gravity, everyone is familiar with that. Electricity and magnetism, unified by James Clerk Maxwell while he was at King's College London in the uh, 1860s. And then inside the world of particles, we've got a strong nuclear force that holds nuclei together and a weak nuclear force that's responsible for forms of radioactivity. OK, so I like to think of what you see on this slide as in some sense being the cosmic DNA that encodes all the information you need to make all the visible matter in the universe including Donald Trump. <laughs> I should say that's how Donald Trump is made, not why. <laughs> OK, but I actually cheated a little bit, because what you see on that slide does not explain where the masses of elementary particles come from. It's important that the electron has a mass, because if it didn't, it would always travel at the speed of light, fly away from nuclei, never make any atoms, never make any molecules, never make any us, for example. So, mass. So we all probably have learned something about mass, right? Uh, Newton told us that weight was proportional to mass. Uh, you may remember from school, W is equal to mg. But what's m? What's the mass? Einstein, energy is related to mass. E is equal to mc squared. But what is m? Where does the mass come from? And uh, that's where this gentleman here, Peter Higgs, comes in. And uh, that's his uh, theory there on the blackboard behind him. Now, just in case you have difficulty in remembering his theory, <laughs> you will be able to see it for the rest of the talk because it's on my T-shirt. 
So the top line explains <laughs> fundamental interactions. The second line, how those act on fundamental particles of matter. The third line is how Higgs give masses to the fundamental particles of matter. And in the bottom, how it makes the weak interactions weak. So everything is on the t-shirt. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.